for this question why is a mapping important for analyzing geohydrological investigations explain with relevant examples understand this word catch this word explain one is going to one that's uh, significant and if you can go to compare with the previous topic it was a geographical note this is explained and both of these questions cannot go on to begin with the similar type of a language now in this case you don't have to use a compact language and that is the expectation of the examiner you have to use a simple language in this case because it is going to be all about explanation the second part that have to be taken care of is why is mapping important for analyzing geo hydrological investigations yeah. that means that if you have made geo hydrological investigations yeah, you have to make a map of it yeah. and then why is it that this map is significant explain with relevant examples that means you have to take some examples not everywhere that you can go to pick up an example now this example caters to two things sir yeah. one is that uh, while explaining the concept you going to take examples and the second is that while you are explaining it exam with examples you have to take another example of a place uh, maybe something like a uh, artesian well of uh, australia or any one of them in general that is going to be another part associated with it now about the topic all in all that is why is it that this topic is significant first is when we going to be talking about uh, the scope why is it that this question was asked uh, this question was asked uh, because meghalaya was in news uh, and when we going to be talking about meghalaya was in on meghalayan and uh, a lot of caves uh, in meghalaya were in news uh, a lot of water bodies were in news uh, a lot of uh, underwater formations were in news uh, and that looks like the basic reason for this question being asked and of course uh, most of the question that going to be asked uh, they must going to strike the people who going to frame your questions that has been number one second is a uh, scope the scope is that you have to be careful in your words because it is about explain if a language is going to be compact it is going to be scientific it makes it easy because yeah, you have to use a very scientific compact language and that the language goes on to become condensed in this case yeah. the approach has to be scientific compact both of them of course you cannot going to write too much of it yeah. this largely because the topic itself is going to be so explanatory in this case yeah. there are two problems that are going to face there is a lack of information with respect to this topic here and how is it that you can go to put this topic all in all and how is it that you can go to present this topic here now coming to it we are talking about why is mapping significant for geo hydrological investigations now you talk about that is here geo hydrological investigations can be carried out in many ways one is going to be by remote sensing another is going to be by aerial survey and then the ground survey and mapping as well there are going to be three ways here remote sensing also goes on to lead to the formation of a map and it is this map that is going to be comprising of variety of type of colors here can you imagine 254 million colors that is going to be in a remote sensing map that is also map aerial survey that is going to be, be taken with the help of an aircraft and these are reconnaissance aircrafts that are going to be taking surveying the whole of the region and then they go to prepare a map that is a different type of map and then of course some of the geologists uh, which go on to be using uh, uh, all of those uh, rocks and things uh, and they go on to go to uh, to different places uh, pick up some samples and then go to do it uh, and that is how they go on to map the help you map the entire of the region now in trying to map the entire of the region you have to map a variety of these uh, layers uh. so we are going to be talking about the mapping means mapping the surface mapping the layers and the mapping of the strata surface strata that means all of these one second third fourth fifth sixth strata and third is going to be the layers of which is going to be made up the aim is to know if you are going to be mapping it the aim is to know the beddings that means uh, the the layers uh, of different type of rocks which go on to be separated from different layers of rocks that's called as bedding set uh, and and the layers that going to separate uh, one bedding from another is going to be called by the name of bedding plane the type of rocks that determine porosity and permeability so it can be sandstone it can be limestone and limestone is permeable shale is going to be porous uh, and uh, which are these rocks uh, if these going to be if they are going to be different type of rocks uh, then uh, the amount of water that is going to be stored in them is going to be very 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 different that way 
Of course, false will go to allow the movement of water in this case. Eh? That is, how is it that the water goes on to move? Reservoirs, that means the place where the water is going to rest. That means eh, there is going to be a good amount of water that is going to be stored in this place. Eh? So with the help of which, the idea is to know where is groundwater, the location of the groundwater, that is geohydrological investigation. Where is the occurrence of the groundwater? That means in what way it occurs. It occurs in the form of a pool, that is something like a pond, or it occurs in the form of a linear form, or is it that it goes on to occur only in the form of a layer of subset? That is going to be occurrence of it. How much is the amount? That means a geohydrological investigation always has to know there is the amount of water because if the amount of water is not significant, why exactly is it that we want to map it at all? And then the storage, there is a, how is it that it been stored? The quality of the groundwater, is it arsenic mix? Is it going to be rich in calcium carbonate or is it going to be rich in salt or whatever it is going to be the quality of the water? And then whatever amount of water that have been stored or whatever amount of water that exists in that place, how is it that it goes on to move from that place here? That is uh, the first part that you need to know. Now, this is important because of many reasons. Uh, because when you go to understand all of these things, uh, you understand various layers that go to determine porosity and permeability and uh, the ability of the, of the surface to store that much amount of water in this case. That's going to be one. The arrangement of the layers uh, and the arrangement of the layers will going to be significant because that will going to determine your economic viability. That you say whether you should go to sink a well in this case eh, or sink eh, something like a machinery in this case eh, and which are the layers where you have to sink eh? Is it that you are going to be sinking it deep down or is it that you are going to sink at a shallow depth? Eh? If it is going to be like an artesian basin that you are going to sink it eh, at a shallow depth then the water will start gushing out in the form of a mount, a fountain. Then to look at the limestone region, why is it the limestone regions are significant? They will be significant because eh, you cannot go to make any structure if there is an underlying layer is going to be limestone. You cannot go to build a road if there is going to be a limestone region because you never know that there is going to be a sinkhole underneath a rock, underneath a road and the whole of the road will go to cave in in this case. So it's going to be limestone regions and to help locations of engineering projects. If you are building a dam, if you are building a tunnel, if you are building a mountainside road, if you are constructing any type of engineering project, then you have to understand that it's like this is a room and if you have a groundwater opening that is going to be seen towards the right hand side of the wall or towards the left hand side of the wall, then of course this tunnel will go to cave in in no amount of time at all. That is, that is what we have to look for. And if it is uh, that going to be joint project, uh, and that these are examples, uh, and you have made a dam, and behind the dam there is going to be a permeable rock, uh, then the entire of the water will go on to get itself drained out of this permeable rock. And that is why it is going to be important. Uh, and that's why we are talking about it. That's why we have to map it. If we don't map it, what will happen? We'll, we'll end up uh, choosing a uh, wrong place for dams. We'll go to build a dam at a wrong place, and uh, maybe the dam will go to collapse after some time. We are going to choose the wrong place for the construction of the roads as well as uh, it has happened in the United States. Eh? They were the first pioneers in building such type of roads eh? and in good number of cases you are going to find that the roads are moving, the cars are moving and all in all the cars went on to sink largely because it was built over a sinkhole. It, was, it is their knowledge that we have been using for the purpose of building our roads as well in civil engineering. Hill slopes, eh? that is the hill slopes do not go to cave in, they do not go to collapse, they do not go to fall and hill slope is stability of it. Eh? Of course, where exactly is it that you are going to build colonies eh, for the people? You may have built a house and an apartment, in big, eh, a big apartment eh, in some place eh? and you have built over limestone surface, a dolomite surface that is going to be caving in in this case. Eh? That's one. If you have built on a fault also, it is going to be likely to do so. And if you have built a dam also on a fault, that is likely to cave in agriculture and if you have uh, let's say develop an agriculture field uh, and this agriculture field is uh, going to be made uh, over again a limestone surface a surface that is uh, going to be permeable or any surface that goes on to be having a very high porosity as well that uh, will going to be that will be responsible for holding a good amount of water over it uh. And of course, the second reason it will end up supplying wrong quantity to agriculture, wrong quantity of water to agriculture without, but that means you won't be able to supply this uh, to agriculture as well. 
you won't be able to locate industry because the industrial location requires certain types of cardinal conditions there. for example the availability of water not able to allow the water to be drained out of it also and that's going to be significant there and lastly you won't be able to plan a settlement in this case here why because settlements require that uh, it must be in a place uh, which uh, is a uh, completely uh, precluded of any type of uh, sinking uh, the rock structure beneath i mean the water um, the amount of water available in that place uh, should be uh, reasonable enough so that uh, the residents can go to use it as well that's going to be significant and you won't be able to define its sustainability in the absence of all of it uh, industry dam formation roads say any type of economic activity would not be sustainable and supposing you have built a colony and the colony is likely to collapse the colony is likely to sink and subside the roads are likely to sink and subside then you have to reconstruct them again you may have to fill this limestone and dolomite bedding planes and the holes eh, with uh, what is going to be called incision engineering by grouting there and a lot of engineering techniques can be applied essentially you may have to sink tons and tons of concrete for this purpose for the purpose of making it uh, sustainable and that is what is going to be making it significant eh? the chances of you making a diagram on the such type of a topic is going to be remote because uh, what all that you are going to be showing in this case eh, that is uh, you will going to explain it only with the help of uh, words uh, having got an imagination eh? it's difficult eh, to translate eh, a map eh, into its uh, significance eh, of such eh, except for the fact that you can go to pick up example then is no absolutely no need to make any type of unnecessary drawing here only if you have uh, been able to convey whatever that you have understood whatever that you have conceptualized that is going to be good enough eh, for you and as well as for getting marks in your answer this is again that was another topic that was uh, liable to getting 70 to 80% uh, marks of such to have more such discussions and analysis subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for notifications on our upcoming videos